Hello everyone, this is Anton again, and today I want to get into tags and tagging in Obsidian. Tags are basically, you know, keyword associations that can be used in a myriad of ways, but in this context, we're talking about applying them to files. And I'm going to show you how Obsidian amps up the, the power of tags. Tags are the simplest and most universal way to add data to files without having to deal with endless layers um, of folders within your file systems. And tags are perhaps the most flexible tool for organizing all different kinds of file types. But in this video, we'll stick to plain text files and notes. And I can show you examples of how I use tags in Obsidian. Now, the traditional way of organizing files in a file system is typically to create folders, but a file can only exist and be stored in one folder at a time. You could make copies of a file and put the different copies in different folders, but really what you're doing is you're creating a duplicate or a clone of the file, and it's not the exact same file. There are two different files at that point. Now, on the other hand, you could add tags to a file, and you can add an unlimited number of tags to a file, and multiple files can leverage the same tags without having to worry about duplicating files and folders and it simplifies the, the, the methodology of how you associate context to your data. So one example of the, the limitation of files that can only exist in one particular folder, let's say we have certain files associated with a project or a certain area. We, you know, typically we would go ahead and organize those files, maybe for family or for work, and we put them in their own folder where if we need to get back to that, that file, there's some high level association with it. And having a folder lets us easily say, okay, this folder is for work or for area one and all files associated with area one, this is where those files will live. But what about the scenario when you have certain files that, um, relate or can be associated with multiple different areas or projects. In this particular case, folders do not work because this file can only live in one folder at a time unless you duplicate the file. And once you do that, really you're creating two different files at that point. So to get around this particular limitation, as mentioned before, we use tags. Now, Tags, you, you have unlimited power at your fingertips when you go to use these things. But as you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, the flexibility and the unlimited nature of tags can be dangerous, right? There's pros and cons to everything. And this topic isn't to tell you that you don't need folders or folders should be eliminated completely. Um, really, I'm trying to get into an area of how you can use tags to your advantage to where you can limit the, the number of folders that you may use which in, uh, to organize files. Now, you can go crazy with tags and people often do. And once they get into this, this whirlwind of leveraging tags, sometimes they can spend five, 10, 20 minutes or more just adding tags to their files. And if you don't use tags the right way, you can also find yourself not just using too many tags. It's also easy to create so many different tags that you completely forget which ones you've used. Um, you may have tags that are you know, singular in nature and you have the same word in plural and you're using both of them for the same reason. So this is where we, we have to hone in and plan on how we're gonna leverage tags to avoid some of the mishaps that you can, you can have 
when you leverage tags. To avoid some of the issues that you can have with tags, we're going to do a little bit of planning and establish a tagging system. So when you go about creating your tagging system, you want to think about three main things here. So at least this is the way I do it. So I come up with some high level properties that matter most about the file that's going to help me, you know, organize them better or retrieve them faster when I when I'm looking for the file. Think somewhat as if you're trying to describe a person, you break this person up into a few different type of areas when you run through your checklist. What are they wearing? When did you meet them? How do they look? What language do they speak? So some high level properties, again, that matters and something that you can repeat on every file and it will bring value most of the time, if not all the time. So it's really important that these properties are used to give your tags more meaning or purpose. And instead of creating a, a file and then tagging it with everything that comes to mind. Now I use five different key properties when I'm tagging a file and it's really basic. I go to the who, the what, the when, the where, and then the status. The who is always going to be a person. And for my system, I capture the first and last name. Now, these are two words. And typically with tags, you, you don't want to go more than two words in your tag. And I also have a rule that I don't have spaces in my tags. So for for the who tag, it's going to be first name, then dash, last name. I can repeat this on everyone's uh, name. Everyone typically has a first or last name, but if not, it really just shortens the tag up. This person that I'm capturing also in this tag is typically going to be someone of major importance. So it's either going to be the owner of the file or the author of the file itself. Now the what is going to be some kind of thing and that's going to be uh, more so what the file is, uh, what's its intention. So if I'm writing a blog post, the what is going to be a blog post or maybe I'm doing a video script. The when I use that for the create date. So when I, as soon as I create the file, the date that I created the file, that's what I use for, for a tag in this particular property. And that's going to be formatted with the four digit year dash two digit month dash two digit date. The where property will consist of an area or place. Now this could be uh, home, work, uh, the, the, the store, maybe it's a project. And lastly, I have a status property. So this could be for a file. It could be whether the file is in draft or maybe it's complete. It could be a version one or two or whatever number there. Or it could also indicate whether the, the file is archived. Now, if we use that example of describing a person, I would, you know, I can voice out and leverage these tags and say, okay, if I use these properties, I met hashtag Jane Dash Doe, comma, a hashtag female, space hashtag coworker, comma, at hashtag work on hashtag 2020-11-22 and she works full hashtag full time. And you can see how that helps, again, bring meaning 
to the document. So the document is going to be related to Jane Doe, who is a female co-worker. And she, you know her from work. You met her on, or the file was created on this particular day. And she works full time. I think that's really helpful. So when you are going to do a search, you can just as easily search for Jane Doe. Or if you have multiple people with Jane Doe, maybe you're doing Jane Doe and co-worker when you're doing your search um, for certain hashtags to hone in on the, the files that are related to this particular person. Now, you don't have to use the same properties that I do. Um, try to keep it simple in the beginning and then tweak it as you go uh, to make it, to give it more meaning um, as you start to get more mature with leveraging these tags. Now, once I figure out those certain properties, like the who, the what, the when, where, and the status, next, I try to create some high level tags that will fit into each of those areas. Now, one of my rules is also not to mix my who tags with the status tags or the what tags with where tags. So you won't find duplicate tags in different properties and you won't find duplicate tags at all as long as I follow that rule. So. There should never be some kind of mix up to where I am sitting there and I'm wondering whether this tag should be a, a who or a what. And if you are sitting there and you're taking time trying to figure that out, then you've probably made the, your, your system a little too complex or you're getting into too much complexity and you need to just simplify your tagging, simple, your tagging system a bit more. So here's an example of, of what I kind of do in the different areas. You can see the properties. You can get some context of what the property means and then some examples um, that will go into those particular properties, some, some tags that will go into those properties. Now, lastly, what you want to do is as you're building out your tag system, you want to be consistent. You want to strive for consistency with your tags. For instance, you don't want to mix up tags like report versus reports, or you will have the same file types associated to two different uh, hashtags when really you're using them both for the same thing. Now, maybe you'll add more rules to yours where uh, certain tags need to be nouns or adjectives or verbs or maybe some combination of things. You want to make sure in your system you know whether you're going to capitalize certain tags or have all your tags lowercase. Like in my, my system, for places, I capitalize every place. And you're, you probably want to realize whether you're going to have any type of uh, symbols or characters within your tags. So like I mentioned earlier, I don't use spaces in any of my tags. So in my names where I use first and last name, I put a dash in between there. You may want to put an underscore. The more standardized your system is, the easier it will be to find things later. So once you get these rules and guidelines that will help you be consistent with your tagging, you probably want to go ahead and, and create a master list of your tags as a reference. You can simply use a note file to keep and track all of your tags. And this list will help jog your memory and keep your uses of tags consistent over time. If you're anything like me, I tend to forget. So having that reference really helps me remember what, I, what rules I had in place for my tags. 
and it keeps me consistent. And you can use that master list to go back and clean up tags that maybe you're not using anymore. So now that I've given a, a high level overview of how you can create a tagging system, let's show this in Obsidian. 